Today I want to talk to you about how to prolong your life by learning the voice of God. This becomes a definitive statement, a declarative statement I say to you now. Prolong your life by learning the voice of God. One of the reasons many of us in slavery is because when God tells us how to get free, we don't know that God's telling us how to get free. There are things that God is speaking to us right now, saying to us, and we need to be listening to the voice of God to hear what he is saying because he has come that we might have life based upon the word that was just said in the song. Why should I be bound? God sent his son so that we might be free. God sent his son to tell us all the things that, that we need to do so that we can remain free. But a lot of times, we don't hear God telling us how to stay free. But I'm here to tell you a very simple word. Prolong your life by learning the voice of God and understand this, that God, in Job 33, 14, says this. 33, 14 says, for God may speak in one way or another. Look at that. Yet man does not perceive it. He speaks in one way. Take it to the NIV so that the folk may be able to see that for a moment and see how it says in the NIV, which is a little more clear that you can see it. For God does speak. He's speaking to us this morning. He's speaking to every one of us the word that we need to have freedom, to get free from any problem we have in our life. Whatever your concern is this morning, my, my brothers and sisters, whatever's bothering you today, God has a word for everything in your life. You have not experienced anything today that God didn't know was coming your way. He's already got an answer for you. He's already resolved your problems. The unfortunate thing about it is we think we have to solve our problems. We cannot solve our problems. Jesus is the answer to every problem we have, and we have got to learn to turn to him instead of trying to fix it ourselves. Taught you last week about how Adam and Eve tried to fix a problem they had and they messed it up. All of the best fixing we can do never compares to what God can do for us. And we have to learn to get out the way that while we're working on our own situation, God will not do a thing for it because God is looking for us to simply trust and believe that he said, I've already fixed it. When Jesus went to the cross, were not his final words, it's finished. It means there's no more work left for you to do. You just need to learn to trust God and let God work out all the problems in your life. Many of us are bound up in debt. Many of us are bound up in sin. Many of us are bound up in all kinds of things that we can't seem to get rid of. We've been working with it, 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 and we still wind up bound up working with it. We have to learn that unless the Lord builds the house, all our labor is in vain. We have to learn that we got to trust in the Lord, lean not to our own understanding, and God will fix all our problems because our God created the world for us, and he said, I'll give you everything you need. All you got to do is follow me. Why should we be bound? We're bound simply because we keep getting involved in God's business and taking care of our life. We can't take care of our life. You can't even make your heart beat. And if God didn't give you the air to breathe right now, you wouldn't have your next breath. We have missed the point. We keep thinking that this old story that's been said, God helps those that helps themselves. Let me tell you, helping yourself is to get out the way and let God fix it for you. Because every fix up we do is always a mess up in the final analysis. And God does speak now one way, now another. But here's a powerful word here, though man may not perceive it. God is always speaking so that we might have life and we may not perceive it because we have not conditioned our ears to hear. Well, I got good news for you. I have labored for several months of preparation of this message. And I have it clear from God. Because when I'm going to tell you what God has said for you to know, I had to be careful I was hearing from God. And I have it all prepared for you right now. So let's go to a foundational scripture. God does speak. Why does he speak? Why will he speak to us? Because God loves us. And why would he be speaking to us? Because he wants us to live. 
There's a scripture that said the Lord once said, I saw you there just tossing around in your own blood. You were dying, and I said, live. God's will for us is that we live, and we have life, and we have it more abundantly, not bound, but freedom. So he speaks, but we've got to hear. Jesus said, let him who has ears to hear, let him hear. Here's the word of God, and I'm going to tell you how to know his voice, how to prolong your life by learning the voice of God. You have to know the voice he's speaking. His voice is always about your freedom. His voice is not about your punishment, your judgment. It's not about condemnation. It's about love. It's about mercy. It's about compassion. It's about forgiveness. God's word is always about, I bless you. But we reject that word, and when we reject that word, we remain in bondage. Why should we remain bound? In Deuteronomy 32, verse 46, Moses says to the people, Set your hearts on all the words which I testify among you today, which you shall command your children to be careful to observe. All the words of this law. Verse 47, for it is not a futile thing for you, because it is your life. And by this word you shall prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. It's that last phrase that we're building this on. It said, by this word, that is the word of God. Look at that. By this word, you shall, with the word shall, meaning that it's, it's definite. You shall prolong your days in the land. The land is this earth. God has spoken and given us his word so that in this life, every one of us can experience life abundantly. We're not waiting to get to heaven to experience life abundantly, but God intended for us to experience it right here. But we remain bound when we don't trust God to do the work in our lives. How can we say we believe God that he'll raise us from the dead and then take us to a joyful place, but that same God can't make this life joyful here? How can we say we can believe he can get us up out the ground, six foot under, pick us up, take us to the sky, let us live eternally, and we can't believe while we're breathing right now and alive, he can't make our life joyful? Come on. You know why it's not happening? It's because when he's leading us in, in, in the dark places, when he's leading us in the valley in the shadow of death, we ain't following him. We're going our own way because it seems the right way to go. We have to learn to retrain our thinking so that we get out the way and stop trying to fix ourselves and let God lead us in the correct way. Let's look at these words. And I'm going to tell you that that last phrase where he says in there, it's not a futile thing for you because it is your life. I'm here to tell you to know the voice of God and to obey him is life. To know the voice of God and obey him is life. Jesus said, I come that you might have life. That's God's purpose for us. He wants you to live, y'all. God in life. I want you to begin to experience life in a completely different way than you've been experiencing life. That's not I, I, that's not I, Jim Lowe. That's the word Almighty God. God is saying to you, I want you to experience life. God's saying, I'm telling you what he's saying. Because he said, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But how is it going to happen? It's not an automatic thing. God has already prepared the opportunity for you to experience life. You have to accept the work of Christ. And if you accept the work of Christ, you have to accept him saying it is finished. If it is the work of Christ and it is a work and it is finished, there is no work you have to do. 
if it is finished, then you trust in him to complete everything he needs to do inside of you for you to be who you are supposed to be. Let's, let's just, okay. That's too far for you at one time. Let's just keep going. The first part of this was to set your hearts. Set your hearts on all the words which I testify among you today. That means focus your hearing. Hear this, hear it. God is saying, focus on what I'm talking about. Be attentive to what I'm talking about. Hearing the word of God teaches us to know God when we hear it. People get upset because I give you scripture after scripture, but that's God's word. That's God's word. That word is life. The more I dump on you God's word, the more life I'm putting on you. Now, you don't have to live with that life. You can choose to let that life go, but it is life. And if I love you, if I'm doing what God's telling me to do, I'm giving you life. Amen. Well, no, okay. I want to give you some substance, which is God. What is better than the substance of God? Right. I can make you feel good. You feel good for the church, and you come into church. Oh, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. But then when you get back out in the world, when the cares of the world and the problems of the world, and all you got is, oh, glory, hallelujah, you ain't got nothing. You need to have the word of God so that you can stand. Having done everything, you stand. And the only way you can stand is that the Lord build your house. And the word of God is what undergirds you. It's a sure foundation. It's a strong foundation. And that's the foundation that we've got to build on. And we've got to recognize when the Lord tells us that what we have to do is set our hearts on his word. He means that. He says, you shall command your children to be careful to observe it. See, our children need to know the word of God. That's why we had those kids in here. Those children need to know God's word. Even if we've screwed up and didn't know God's word, those children still need to know it. That's what God said. Teach them to your children. He said, when you walk along the way, talk to your children about it. When you get up in the morning, tell your children. If you love your children, you'll tell your children more about the word of God than you will nursery rhymes and Jack and Jill. You'll tell your children more about God than you will about their heritage, about being black. You'll tell them about who they are as children of God. He said, you shall command your children all the words of this law. Because all the words of this law, Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are life and they are spirit. The last I remember is that you and I came alive as a result of the Holy Ghost. And what Jesus says, when you get my word in you, you're getting the Holy Spirit in you. And when you got the Holy Spirit in you, the Spirit is life. And if you have the Spirit in you, if you got the Spirit in you, you got something that Paul said is, though we might outwardly be wasting away, we're being renewed every day from the inside out. And that comes from the Spirit of God. And if the Spirit of Christ be, in life, be alive in you, then that same Spirit will raise you up if you do die in this life before Christ comes. Hear me, brothers and sisters. The fundamental thing in life, most important thing in life you could ever do is hear this word and obey it. Do whatever God tells you to do, that's what you, to, you should do. He says, for it is not a futile thing for you. It's not a futile thing. This is just not a simple thing. Some of y'all come in here and you sit up and you don't hear nothing i got to say. You're just sitting here paying your dues. Let me tell you something. What I'm giving to you right now is your life. You may not understand that, but let me tell you, why, why do my people, why are they destroyed? For a lack of knowledge. That ain't the knowledge of astronomy or physics, anatomy. It's the knowledge of my word that God is talking about. I don't err in giving you God's word. God's word is life. It is health to all your flesh. The thing about it is, that the word of God, God said, I sent my word when my folk were sick. I didn't send them doctors. I didn't send them attorneys. I didn't send them physicians. I sent them my word. And that same word that healed in that day is the same word that's able to heal. That's the same word that brought Jesus out from the ground and out of the grave. That's the same word that you can get inside of you. If you pay attention, hearken to the voice of the word of God. You spend your time doing everything else. You spend more time on Facebook, Twitter. You spend more time out there watching TV when God said, this word is not a futile thing. It's an important thing. We have to get in this word, guiding light. There's no way you're going to be able to stand with your education. 
Look, let me tell you something. There's a thing called Alzheimer's, and it's lurking out there. There are things called arthritis, and it's lurking out there. There are things that's called cancer. It's lurking out there. But I heard the word of God that cancer, Alzheimer's, none of these diseases are anything when it has to stand against an almighty God who created everything. If I have the favor of the Lord, that's all that matters in my life. If I have the favor of God, then cancer will have to flee. Alzheimer's will have to flee. Leukemia will have to go. Any force arrayed against me, no weapon formed will prosper. But in order to be free and not be bound, I've got to get this word inside of me because this word is what makes me free. It's not a futile thing, he says. Stop treating it as insignificant to know the word. You're destroyed for the lack of knowledge of this word. Many of you just don't realize how much of a blessing it is to be in a church where you hear so much word. So what you throwing up the word when you go out? When you throw up the word, you're killing demons. You throwing up that word, look, demons got to run because the demon don't want to be in your throw up. Don't nobody want to be around throw up? But when you're throwing up God's word, let me tell you something. Demons get out the way. Oh, Jesus, let me get out of here. That's some of the stuff I can't stand right there. I'd rather throw up God's word than I would something that's on the inside of me because I'm tore up because the word didn't fix me up. I'm going to tell you something. Some of you even complain, but I'm going to tell you one thing. You can be assured of all the words that you're getting right here. One day when you stand before God, you're going to wish you'd paid attention. Why didn't I listen to Bishop? You know, a lot of times you ever been in those situations and you realize, I wish I had listened to what somebody told me when I was younger. I'm giving you God's word so that you can be free, unbound, unbroken today. The only way we can get close to God is through the knowledge and the retention of his word. That's the only way. And we have to come to know the word because when we come to know the word, we come to know God. And every one of us can do it. There ain't nothing complicated on this. If you can't read, God sent preachers. If you can't hear, he gave you books. He's given witnesses all over the world so that everybody might be free. God doesn't want you bound. He sent his word that you might be healed. And why? Because he said, the word is life. God says his word is our life. So why do we ignore it so much? How much time have you studied the word this past week? Well, I don't know what I need to study. Oh, don't come here with that mess. As much scripture I give you all, you got to do is write down the scripture I gave you. Go back and read, read over what God told me to give to you. Because let me tell you something. You should not be up in here for nothing. If you are a member of this church, whatever God has me to put out to you is what you're supposed to hear. Well, I was listening to uh, Brother Jojo Bozo and, uh, uh, Bozo, and I was hearing them. That ain't who God put you in the church of. He put you in the house under somebody called Bishop Jim Lowe. Some of y'all talking about, well, I want to hear a Reverend so-and-so, and I've been down the street to do this. This ain't, that ain't your church home. And maybe God put you here. Maybe it's hard for you to hear something for whatever it is, but God got you here for a reason. Why do you treat his word as insignificant when the word is going forth? And you got to, well, we got to have a meeting. We're going to have it during church service. That ain't right. Come on now. I don't need to start meddling because folk get upset with me. Well, we had to have a meeting because we got to do this. We got to do that. We got to do this. Hey, you can't do nothing if you don't have the word of God in you. And how you going to minister without the word? You ain't got no anointing. That, that's the reason folks don't pay no attention to you. Folks tell me, Bishop, we need you to do this. We need you to do this. I can't do everything. What we need is some more anointed folk listening to the word so that when they say and when they speak, the people will listen because they're not hearing you. They're hearing God. Why do we ignore it? We just do it. You see, it is our life. Jesus said in John 6, 63, he said, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. What, 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 what's okay? So wait a minute, 
it's good to have a job. Working 40 hours, working nine to five, rolling on the river, just rolling. But that's all we're doing. We just keep on rolling and rolling and rolling and working. And at the end of the day, we ain't got nothing to show for it. But I'll tell you, every bit of word that I get in my heart, it changes my life. Every bit of word that gets in my heart, it fixes something. It begins to cleanse something. It begins to touch my place of need. Because God said, this word is my life. I was created by the word of God. I came into existence by the word of God. Let us make man in our image. When I began to understand that if I'm in the image of God, I was created in the image of God so that God can dwell inside of me. And when I understand that God dwells inside of me, it's not me that has to face my problem. It's God that's in me that I need to let see my problem. And when God sees my problem, God fixes my problem. I don't never face a problem alone. And all of us have got to realize that. We've got to understand we're created in the image of God so that God can dwell on the inside of us. We've got to step out of the way, out of ourselves, deny ourselves, and let God fix our problems for us. For a long time in my life, I was one. You'd hear me say it. If y'all can't fix it, I'll figure it out. I'll come out with a solution. That's because I was believing in myself and knowing, but I've come to realize it ain't about me. What it is is about God who's in me. And that if I, well, if I just get out the way, there ain't a problem that's going to come in my life that I can't deal with when I let God step up to the plate. But how do I get Christ in me? It's this word that has to get in me. The word has to work on the inside. Bible says I'll be transformed by the renewing of my mind according to the word of God. Yeah, to make me think different. Some of y'all already recognize Bishop a little touch. He got some problems. It's that word that's been working on the inside of me. Check me out. The stuff that I stand for, the things that I speak for, is it not the word of God that I've spoken about? Some of you may know me a little bit better. You may look at me and say, well, he's got this issue. He got this problem. You know what? But I'll tell you, show me a man that ain't got some problems and ain't got some issues. And then I'll tell you something else about it that God has shown me so many different times that every man he picked, every woman he picked got some problems and got some issues. If God had to wait on a perfect person, there'd be nobody to carry his word. Wouldn't be but ain't but one Jesus and I ain't him. So I don't know why you think I'm Jesus. I know some of the kids see me, they call me Jesus, but I ain't Jesus. I want you to know sometime that when I've been out for a long time, I've been wearing my shoes a long time, my feet stink. I need to let you know that. Somebody said, oh, his shoe, his feet stink. I'm not almighty God. But I will tell you something with my stinking feet. I can deliver the word. I can tell you something else right here. That's going to be one thing that's not going to stop me. I will walk on my stinking feet and I will tell you what thus saith the Lord. Smell it with my stinking feet. And you just need to be coming up and listening like this and just hearing what it got to say and turn your nose the other way. Show me somebody that doesn't have spot and blemish on them. Get caught up on the messenger. Get caught up on the message and hear what God has got to say. And then he goes on to this thing. The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And then we go back to Deuteronomy. He said, this word shall prolong your life. It'll prolong your life. The word prolongs your life. All God got to do is tell you one thing. One word from God can turn your life around. One word, and God can turn your world around. He can do it. And so he said, you'll prolong your life in the land which you cross. And that's the land. He wasn't telling them when they get to heaven. He's telling them in this life. He says in Proverbs 4 and 20 about his word. He said, my son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Do not let them out of your sight. We got too much television in the way of the word of God. 
We spend more time watching TV than we do reading our Bible. Including me, right now. I have to think about it for a minute. Reading my Bible and studying the Word might not be too far behind. But the truth of the matter is, I'm sure it probably is behind. I've been following up, catching up on the Game of Thrones and looking at that, and I've been watching. I am already about 19 hours into it in the past week. I can't tell you truthfully that I put 19 hours in the Word of God last week. I'm being honest with you. But it was easy for me to do, watch the Game of Thrones. But while you want to throw the stones at me, let's talk about what you've been watching. Let's talk about what you've been spending your time doing. Are you any better than where I am? I'm, I'm willing to stand up here and let me tell you something. What God said about it, he said, if you confess, he said, I'll cleanse you. Well, no, I ain't there yet, but I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on. I might not be everything that you want me to be, but one thing I'm going to do is every day get up and say, Lord, use me this day for the way you want to use me. And I'm going to say to you, I need to understand that his word is life. He say, keep them, keep them within your heart. So out of the, let me let the rest of the word do it. He say, for verse 22, for they are life. There it is again. My word is life. There it is again to those who find it and health to a man's whole body. Let me tell you something. Some of you are bound today. There's a little cell that's a little crooked in your body. And that little cell is going knocking on other doors right now, and you don't know it. And it's turning them other cells to get crooked. Now you got two crooked cells going on in your body, and they're knocking on doors. Now you got four cells. Now you got 16 cells. You don't know nothing about it. Because you're watching television. Because you're looking at the news, because you, you're watching uh, uh, Beyonce, and you're watching all kinds of stuff that's going on, right. Dr. Dre and whoever else. Right. You're trying to wonder who shot Tupac. <laughs> you're caught up on everything but the right thing. And now you got 256 sales going astray. Now it's 512. Now, it's going on, and they're going on in your body. You don't know it. But God said, my word is health to all your flesh. What you've got to understand is that what you need, one day those cells are going to start, and they're going to be in that body, and the doctor's going to say, I see a spot. And then that's when you're going to call, Lord Jesus, help me. But the problem is... They have begun to grow so much, now you're ready to put on the brakes, but there ain't no way you can get enough word to slow it down because when you had time to get the word, you ignored the word. You thought it was a vain thing. You said it was insignificant, but now that you need the word, you're on your knees, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's too late now. Where were you when I needed you, says the Lord? It's all right. You might die, but even if you die, I'll raise you up. But Lord, I want to be here a little bit longer. You should have thought about that when you were watching, trying to find out who shot Tupac. And why you were doing all the other stuff. That's okay, I'm going to take you into heaven anyway. But I want to stay with my children. You should have thought about that. When you wanted to see what Beyonce had to say. Let me keep going. I don't need to get started on that. I'm just going to tell you, you better consider carefully your ways while you're ignoring the word of God. When he says it's hell, so, look, I drink the word of God today like orange juice because I need something to make sure I'm being clean from the inside out. I, you, you know, you, some of you, you go to the gym, you work out. For what? Paul say, hey, you know, it's okay to work out. It's worth something. But you'll spend more time in the gym than you will in the Word. I need, yeah, I need, thank you, sister. I need to come on because I need to move faster because I got some points I need to get across here. Yeah, I'm just trying to be straight so everybody knows because God loves everyone in this room. And the only way you're going to get free is that you start getting serious about this Word. 
There's nothing more important than knowing the voice of the Lord so that our lives can be made better. Nothing more important. If you want to choose to remain healthy, you need to understand that you got to have God's word as medicine in your life. You've got to have that. And so by this word, we prolong our days. And now, because I have to push this along the way, and I don't know where I'll go next week with where I'm going on this, I need to get you to understand this point. God has given us his written word for one simple thing, so we can know him. When we have this word, the more I study the word, and this has happened in my life, and I honestly tell you, I know his word. And one of the things, most important thing I have to do is to recognize from this word to learn and understand his ways. It's one thing to have the word. Many of you have the word. But you've got to recognize you need more than just that word because, see, that word is a foundation. There are roughly, I've looked it up, we have 50,000 thoughts that go through our mind every day. And all of those thoughts that go through our mind, all of them are not a God. We think all kinds of crazy stuff, you know. But among those thoughts is also the word of God, the voice of God speaking that comes in to our minds. We study the word of God so that we can distinguish from these 50,000 thoughts that go through our mind every day what is God and what is not. By getting the foundation, we know God by knowing his word, and when a word goes by that lines up with the written word, we grab hold of that spoken word of a thought. Because if God lets that thought get in our head, it's for us today. That Bible was written so that we might know him. So that when he speaks to us, Jim, walk this way, I can know that's God. There are the 50,000 thoughts. There's a bunch of thoughts telling me all kinds of stuff. But I have to learn to filter out all of the negative thoughts and grab hold of the one thought. It don't need but one thought per day by God. It doesn't need but one word from God. But if God is speaking and I'm not perceiving, if I'm not hearing it, I might fall off in the ditch because I'm not paying attention because I don't know God's word. But if I have the foundation of knowing and studying the written word, I know God and I know God's ways. Let me tell you how to work. Brother Robert makes me mad. There are ways that I can respond. My, my, he made me mad. He did something. Really, I'm just upset with him. All kinds of thoughts going in my head. You need to slap that Negro down. You need to beat him in the head. You need to cuss him out. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do. You need to get at him. You need to backstab. All kinds of thoughts going through my mind. Yes, yes. And then there's one little thought that goes in there, and it says, you need to pray for him. Now, that's crazy. But that's a thought amidst all the others. You right. need to spit in his face. You need to kick him. You need to talk about it. Roll your eyes at it. You get all kinds of thoughts coming through your mind. But then, see, when you hear a thought that comes in there, if it don't line up yeah. with that word of God, yeah. Yeah. and you know, you say, that ain't the way of God to spit him, spit at him, to kick him, to knock him upside the head, to cuss him out. That ain't the way of God. So you begin to dismiss those thoughts. You don't even let them come in your mind. But guess what? Most of us, what we're going to do, we're going to do exactly. We're going to get even. All right. But that one single thought, pray for him. Yeah. Or that one single thought, give it to God. Mm-hmm. When you know the ways of the Lord, you begin to see that what Jesus did, when they spat upon him, when they plucked out his yes, beard, sir. when they nailed him to the cross, he never said a cuss word back. You know the way of God is not to cuss nobody out. Yes, so when you hear the voice that tells you don't cuss, you know that's God. Yes, sir. But yet there's something else that's in you that said cuss him out and you got to be able to distinguish that ain't God. 
You've got to know God. You've got to know his ways so that you can walk in his way. Because he said, if you walk in his ways, you will experience life and you'll prolong your days. So many of us have been killing our own self by the way we treat one another. Yeah. We've been snuffing out our life because we've been talking about people. We've been lying on people. We've been doing things that we ought not do, and it ain't God because we're not walking in God's way. But we have to know the ways of the Lord so that when God, who is always speaking to us, can speak to us and tell us the truth, and we can walk by the truth and not by what we feel or what we think. So we study God's word for one simple reason, to know God's ways. And when we know his ways, no matter what we face, whatever day, we know the way of the Lord. Abraham was a man that knew the way of the Lord. And when God said, I'm going to go wipe out Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham knew that God wasn't a God of wrath. God was a God of love. And he knew that he just needed some, if, if somebody would plead and intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah, he knew the way of God was not to destroy all those people. And Abraham said, Lord, if there were 50 righteous, would you destroy the city if there were 50 righteous? God said, I will not do it. Abraham knew the way of the Lord was love and mercy. He said, if there are 45, God said, if there are 45, I wouldn't do it. Abraham went on forward because he knew God didn't want the righteous to perish. He said, if there are 40. Abraham understood the way, and Abraham worked with God, with the way of God. Abraham understood the way of God when God said to him, go off up your son. Abraham knew God ain't telling me to kill my son. Right. But even if he is telling me to kill my son, he's able to bring him up. That's right. And by faith, he said, I'll do what you said, Lord. He was obedient. But he knew the ways of the Lord were not to murder his son. Yeah. Some of us go off doing all kinds of stuff that we proclaim are God, and it ain't God's ways, and we're too stupid to realize it. Because we haven't studied enough of his word. I know that's an offensive word to some of I don't care right now at the moment. I'm trying to get folks to understand how dumb and ignorant you is when you don't know the word of God and you do stupid stuff. We can avoid so much trouble if we simply pay attention when, we, when God is speaking to us. I have walked into problems when God has told me. I can hear his voice. Don't do that, Jim. But sometimes I'm going to do it anyway. And I know better. Because there's a nature that's inside of all of us. And woe be it unto me when I know what to do and I don't do the thing that's right. But I'll tell you one thing else. There are many of us that are going to die because of our ignorance. And our ignorance is going to be because we had a chance to learn. And we ignored God. We thumbed our nose. And said, I ain't studying your word. I'm going to do what I want to do. But how many problems do we go to? And experience and how much pain and grief do we bear in this life simply because we don't obey what God tells us to do. Amen. God has spoken so that we might have life That's right. and that we might be able to understand his ways so that he speaks now. We understand his ways so I can live my life now. I study the word from what happened in the past so I know his way. So when I'm walking now this day, I know the way because I know his ways. That's the reason you get the word. You stand on this word to know his ways. So in this day, you know the way. This is why we do this. That's why you keep getting the word. So you can know his ways. So that in the day, you can walk the way. When you hear the voice. Because the voice of God is not telling you to, uh, the voice of God might not tell you. No, no, no. The written word might not tell you about a contract to not enter into. Right. But when you understand the ways of God right. and you recognize that person that's on the other side of that contract you signed and ain't saved, Amen. and he told you don't enter contracts with them, and you hear that voice, some, some voice say, I don't know if this, you don't need to do this. You look and you know that you're about to enter into an agreement with an unsaved person. Yeah. Then you know that voice that you heard was God. Yeah. I've had so many folks. Brothers and sisters come up to me, tell me God told them that so-and-so is supposed to be their husband or their wife. Now, you know, some of y'all, how many of y'all felt like, you know, somebody's supposed to be your husband or wife? Don't raise your hand. But that's what I... <laughs> but I had folk come up to me and tell me, Bishop, a pastor, because I can remember those times, 
the Lord showed me. <laughs> Sister Pat's supposed to be my wife. No, that, no, that ain't, they ain't say that. I was just trying to, uh, let, let me take that. Let me reverse that. Ain't nobody told me that. Because I might not hear the voice of God when they come up and tell me. Let me try that. Yeah, that's, I can't go that way. Let's try it another way. But honestly, I have had folk come up and tell me that that person right there is supposed to be my husband or my wife. And I said, but wait a minute, God told you that. But what about their husband and the wife they married to right now? Well, I don't know how God's going to work it out, but God will work it out, so he, out some way. You know, he, he, he'll fix it. And they're going to tell me I'm waiting on them. I don't know, maybe their husband and wife, they're going to get divorced or something, but I know that's supposed to be mine. Wow. I am not lying. <laughs> I mean, church folk, come tell me. And don't have sense enough to realize God ain't never told you. Somebody married to somebody else supposed to be yours. But there are folk that will swear up and down. And I say, that's not God. Who are you to tell me? You don't know what God said to me. You weren't there when God spoke to me. No, I wasn't, but I know that ain't God. I know just as sure as I'm standing here, God said, you just watch it. She's going to be mine. That's not God's way. So bottom line, we have to learn the way of God, and we have to walk in the way of God, because if we don't learn the ways of God, then we're going to go do stuff thinking it's God, because the devil going to tell us a whole lot of mess and tell us that's God. The devil will say, call you by your name, and say, Jim, this is what you need to do. And it'll sound like God. Get them old preacher voices coming to you. Thus saith the Lord. You need more children. I'm telling you some crazy stuff the devil tell you out there. Now, he ain't never told me that. I got enough children I got. I don't need no more children, okay? <laughs> somebody going to say, Bishop say the devil, that, that, that somebody told him he need more children. That's not so. Let me keep going on with where we go. But there's some crazy folk out there saying God told them to do all kinds of stuff. But it happens because they don't know the way of the Lord. So look, I want to give you four steps in order to know the voice of God. And here, here's the thing here. Before, before I do that, I want to tell you to know the way. I've said know the way. Let me, here's my supporting scripture. Psalms 103 verse 7. It says here, he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. You can see God operating in a lot of ways and still not understand God. You need to ask God, explain to me your ways. You know what you need to ask God to do? Some people wonder, somebody's come up talking about President Trump and everything about him. You need to ask God, explain to me your ways how this is president. Explain to me so I know your ways. Understand the ways, not the acts of God. When you understand the way of God, then some things make sense to you in ways that they never made sense to you before. Because there were folks saying, well, how did we get a black president? Understand the ways of God. God has a plan. Some folk didn't want a black president. Some folk don't want a Trump president. But the bottom line is the ways of God, you still respect whoever's in authority. Is it God to rebel against the authority? No, it's not. So do you rebel against the president because you don't like him? Should they rebel against Obama because they didn't like him? Should you rebel against Trump because you don't like him? The way of God is we don't rebel against authority unless authority rebels against God. And so folk will get you going on issues. But you need to be on ways of God. All right, let's just go on. Four things. And then we're going to conclude in, the, in about five to ten minutes after that. <laughs> Study his word. Set aside a time and day and a place. Study his word. 
You got to continue. This is not an idle thing. I'll probably have to preach more on this message next week. You got to study his word, people. You ain't doing it that much enough right now. You still got a lot more. And even if you did it 24-7, that is not too much because it shows God how much you love him. Second thing, I taught you a little bit on this a few weeks ago. Meditate on his word. Remember the breathing exercise I told you about? And learn how to deal with the monkey mind. Because as soon as you start trying to meditate and think on God, everything else is going to come up. But as you practice this, I'm telling you, God's going to bring you closer and closer the more you practice. The more you present yourself before God, the more God works on the inside of you. Thirdly, ask God to know his ways. Ask him to know his ways and let him show you his way. It's more important to know the ways of God than the works of God. Because when you know the ways, the ways will teach you through each day. Exodus 33, 13, God, Moses said to God, he said, I pray if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way. Show me your way that I may know you. Let them see that. To know God, know his ways. Exodus 33, 13. Look at that part right now. He says, now therefore I pray if I found grace, that is favor in your sight. Show me now your way. Why? When you know the way, you come to know God. Do you see that? You don't come to know God sitting up in here. Oh, Jesus. You come to know God by studying his word to know his way. When you know the way of God, you know God. I've had more experiences in learning the way of God. When I see the ways of God, I recognize God is in his way. Jesus said, I am the way. So when you study the ways of God, you actually come closer to Christ himself. Then fourth thing to do, learn to listen to his voice. When you listen to his voice, when I say listen to it, not just hear it, but listen to obey his voice. Be quick to hear and obey. We need to know the voice of God. We study the word so that we may know his ways and know the sound of his voice so that when he speaks to us in today, we know who he is. A quick story to end up with. We know that God now speaks. He speaks now one way and now another. That's what Job told us. He's speaking to us every day of our lives to keep us from all harm. But many of us are still remaining bound because we're not listening to God. We're doing what we want to do. We're seeing the world through our eyes, through our sun tint, sun, our sunglasses, our tinted lens. We're looking at one another according to a tint that we have in our own eyes. We spend more time talking about what's wrong with that and wrong with this and wrong with that instead of being able to realize that even in the wrong and everything that's there, God has something that's good there. Nobody is all bad and nobody is all good. But in every one of us, we have a little bad and a little good. But every one of us should be allowing the word of God to work in us to purge us of the bad so that every day we become better and better as we mature in the Lord. I'm going to tell you a story that I heard, and it's about a young girl, and it, uh, it's a couple. The story I heard is about this couple that had a young daughter, young girl, in their old age. And, you know, when you get to have a child, if you've gotten kind of old, that child becomes your heart. It's the one you just, you just, you know, that we waited, we tried for so long, and we finally got this girl. And they were very lenient with the baby, and they, they thought she was so cute when she would exercise her individuality and do things that were contrary to the commands of mom and dad. And the child had learned to ignore the parents. Whatever they said to her, they, she would ignore it and they would think it was cute because she did it in such a cute way. Did you see how she rolled her eyes? Look at that. That's so cute. And progressively, she became more and more independent and disobedient. 
And about the age of three, the young girl went out into the yard to play and was told to stay inside the yard. But inadvertently and unfortunately, the gate had been left open from someone who'd come in the night before. And the parents saw the girl go out in the yard and they saw the gate was open and they saw her seeing the gate as an opportunity to go explore. And as they saw the gate and the girl going out the gate that's open, they saw heading down the street a car that was coming. And they saw the girl going in between the two cars that were parked right outside the gate. And they see this car coming down and they started screaming at their daughter and they yelled at her. They screamed and said, tell her, stop, stop. And in between the cars, she turns around, looks at mommy and daddy and she smiles and she stops and looks at them. And then she turns around and darts on out into the street. And to their horror, they see the car hit their daughter and propel her down the street. The mother and father rush to their only child just in time to see her eyes roll back in her head and she dies in, her, in their arms because she would not listen to her mother and father. How many of us has God called to us to tell us, don't drink that, don't smoke that, don't say that, don't do that, and we turn and we go ahead anyway. How many of us have found ourselves having bought off more than what we can chew? When God spoke to save our life, his words were life for us, and we went our own way. How many of us have heard the voice of God? Don't. And we stop for a moment. And then we rush head on into the sin that we should not do. Let me tell you something. The price we pay for sin is more than the sin that we do. What we experience as a result of the sin, that pleasure is nothing compared to the price we pay for that time. I want to encourage each and every one of you to now begin to set aside that time. Set aside the time so that you'll focus on God's word, you'll study his word, meditate on his word, and pray to know his ways, and then listen to know his voice. If you don't focus on seeking after God as an important part of your life, you cannot expect to hear him speaking to you with clarity. He's going to speak, but sometimes we won't understand because we don't understand the voice of God. And I'm trying to give you that opportunity today. You'll suffer many unnecessary pains. But if you will discipline yourself to concentrate on the Lord, and if you will diligently obey everything he says, then you'll be able to experience life and experience it more abundantly. And understand this, that when you do what God tells you, the quality of your life will be increased. And ultimately understand when you listen and obey what God has to say, my brothers and sisters, you will prolong your days by obeying the word of God.